It's really nice to see all of you today. Uh, a bit like autumn, as my husband was saying, but I think that's probably as good as you get it, so I'm not complaining. Uh, it's very nice to start today the fourth workshop after a series of very interesting, diverse topics. And nice to see a lot of friendly and familiar faces that have followed us sometimes from th throughout all of them. And just for the newcomers, as those who are not very familiar with the network, <coughs> I thought I would say just very briefly uh, a few words about what it's trying to do and some of the ways we want to take this forward. <coughs> I'm carrying the, the end of a call, so apologies in advance for all this kind of incessant coughing and I hope we'll connect ideas rather than germs at the end of the day. <laughs> um, the Scottish Network on Digital Cultural Resources Evaluation started because as we were trying to discuss and decide on strategies for Kelvin Hall and other projects as well, it became very clear that the digital is underpinning a lot of the activities of cultural institutions, both within the university, but also our partners outside in the cultural heritage sector. And uh, despite the amazing amount and the increasing numbers of digital applications and digital initiatives and the effort and resources we're all putting into this, uh, we saw that the evaluation and assessment of how are this actually impacting our users, our own internal strategies and work, and what's the end result of all of this. For example, if you put it up there on the web, if you digitize it or if you create applications and different kind of tools, how are they then used by different types of communities and what's the impact of all, all of this? And <coughs> it was interesting to see that actually there's a lot of disparate work but not enough bringing it together and also distilling it in guidelines and maybe uh, good practice suggestions that we could all follow. So that's why we set up the network and we thought from the beginning and it was <coughs> very nice to see it, we succeeded with that have a combination of researchers and academics at all levels, from postgraduate students to uh, sort of experienced professors, but also cultural institutions from all sectors working with the digital. And it's nice to have this combination from early career researchers and um, managers having to deal with issues uh, that relate with the digital. The first one, we started with layering the field, what's happening in Scotland, but also beyond, what are the lessons, what were some of the key influential projects that affected and are still having a legacy today about how we go on about digital and cultural heritage. And then the second one, we're looking at users because we thought it was very important. So we titled that co-curation, co-creation, crowdsourcing. And it was one of the most popular ones. And we managed to very nicely combine and sort of piggyback with a knowledge exchange event. So although we had a lot of practitioners in the workshop at the 1st of December, we also had an extra day where we brought the Wikimedia in residence and Museums Gallery Scotland. We ran it at the Kelvin Grove and had people do a more hands-on um, kind of workshop about crowdsourcing and how you can use it in your own organization. Then the third one at the end of March, we looked a little bit at methodologies and the how and the tools and how do you go about evaluating. And it was a very nice range from the qualitative to the quantitative and a discussion about how none of this actually in isolation is the golden perfect method and that you, you really need to combine if you want to capture some of the complexity that the cultural sector always encapsulates. So already throughout all those three, there were questions that were leading to this fourth one. What do we mean when we talk about impact? And what's the value of these resources? And is it just metrics and how many likes and downloads we had that we need to be recording? How do you capture the quality of the experience that people and different users are having when they're using digital? So also there are different kinds of initiatives and projects, some of them very large scale, very much about big data and how this affects our understanding of impact. And the complete other end, as we saw at the last one, for example, when it was a very much in-depth user-based evaluation based on 10, 15 users, if that, that actually illuminated the type of experience they had when they were using a mobile app. So having a very broad range and scale highlighted that we need to try to think and decide because impact is a word, one of those that has been thrown around a lot and starts sometimes losing its meaning, but it's here to stay at the same time. For example, within the UK academic framework, 
in the next ref. Impact is here to stay for sure. We haven't decided exactly what form it will take, but impact is also here to stay in different kinds of local authority and other national and cultural heritage institutions of when they're trying to justify and explain how they're using taxpayers' money when they're putting resources in this direction. So I asked a very wide and different range from different fields, speakers, to come and give us their insights and lessons learned today. <coughs> and I think it's going to be a nice sort of multidisciplinary combination. But as with all of our workshops, the speakers are only one part. And the very important part is all of you together. So the afternoon sessions with the workshops uh, and the group discussion, this room is quite nice, I think, with that, because we have the more informal corners, and there will be food later on. So we can have food for thought as well as kind of to sustain us. Um, so I'll just say a few housekeeping things. There's no fire alarm schedule for today. So if we hear something, we have to use not the lift, but the, the door to go outside. That's the same door that takes you to the toilets. There's none on this level. It's one down or further down in the building. Um, you will have, I hope you haven't sat on it, but you will see on the chair <coughs> the <coughs> program, but also the list of participants. And you probably have seen a pale blue form as well. No workshop relating to evaluation will be complete without an evaluation form. And I know you're probably getting quite a few of those, but we try to keep it very short and simple. So if afterwards you can take the time to fill that in, Rosie at the back, Rosie Spooner, who's been, you've communicated probably all of you with her by now, is the driving force making all these workshops work. It's the RA on the project. Who also managed, last time she was just doing her viva of her PhD at the same time as organizing workshop three. This time at least it's out of the way, I'm happy to say, so I don't feel as guilty when she does the work on this. Um, so she has an envelope for the evaluation forms on your way out. <coughs> And um, also to say we have Richard and his colleague from the University of Strathclyde that I was so impressed last time when the workshop three was hosted by one of the partners, the Computing Science at the University of Strathclyde and their audiovisual unit, ours, for some reason, we have a very nice team at the University of Glasgow. There's graduation or different events. Every single time we do the workshop, we manage to coincide. So it was very nice they came from the other end of town. And he came to video record things. And he's very strict about the quality of his videos, <laughs> as well as being very flexible. So what I'll ask the speakers, and maybe people doing the questions, we have this um, mobile, the, microphone here and because there were um, a lot of people asking who couldn't make it today they were asking how we're going to record it and Twitter only lets you do those 140 characters in the best case so we are video recording the talks and we're going to put them up on YouTube I always make the same joke about my son who likes rap he thinks that the Scottish Digital Network YouTube channel is probably the poorest attended because we have I don't know how many followers it's not the thousands that he expects but actually, we're getting people from all over the world and across the Atlantic asking about the um, activities of the network. So if we can facilitate the quality of the recording by just doing a little bit of this kind of acrobatics, it will be really great. <coughs> He's going to try and capture a few of the kind of activity at the group discussions afterwards. More importantly, when we reconvene, as you see in the program, we'll have each group sort of reporting back to the plenary what the results of the workshop were. We're also tweeting, and it's W4 for workshop four. As you see, and we have the other tweets at the previous hashtags, one, two, and three. Um, and we'll also, I've asked the speakers, we'll also put the slides afterwards on SlideShare for those who want to see it. Um, I wanted to remind you, I haven't, uh, David Gamester, the director of the Hungarian here, and we haven't had the chance to talk about the details because we're so busy with the decant of our collections. But what you see as a kind of, on the right hand side of the Kelvin Hall building is about one third that we are currently very busy and actively kind of getting prepared. <coughs> we're moving offices in a few weeks time. So it was a very busy time of year, but there's never perfect timing for these workshops. And we thought we are quite used to doing a lot of things at the same time. And it's the same for the Moving Image Archives. Emily is here from the National Library of Scotland. 
that are going to be sharing the space with us and the Glasgow Life colleagues too. So it's the three partners, the town, GAUN, the local authority, the university and the national, which that's why we thought was a fascinating combination of quite different audiences, different approach of working together um, and how digital and whether it's going to contribute in this kind of new type of communication, new kind of audiences. We will have a portal, for example, joining all three collections and it will be very uh, interesting and important to test how this is going. So we're hoping in the bright, shiny, new, wonderful Kelvin Hall Lecture Theatre, we're going to run the final symposium sometime at towards the end of 2016 to give us a bit of time to live with the building and see how it all works with different kind of users. And there will be also a public lecture <coughs> and I think it's kind of flash news. I just had the acceptance from Mark O'Neill who used to be uh, just across the road. You can see a little bit of the Kelvin Grove. He was involved in the redisplay of the Kelvin Grove and he's now head of research at Glasgow Life. But he's about to retire so I thought it was really nice to bring all his experience about evaluating and assessing the impact of culture. One of his research interests, for example, is about the impact on well-being and health, but generally on different kinds of communities. And we'll also use the opportunity to have an open event with our digital collections. So, uh, because as you can see a little bit from the uh, architect's drawing, it will be very close to the street, very different to the access, the physical access we currently have at the Hunterian behind the gate of the University and University Avenue. But people don't realize it's still a study center, a collection center. It's not phase two is what we're undergoing at the time. We haven't um, finalized the plans for that. Phase two will be for the remaining two thirds of the building and trying to get support for exhibition and public access spaces. The, the one currently, the phase one uh, we're moving to uh, is bringing together our collections which are in very disparate locations and creating study center spaces, but there will be a foyer and we're hoping having the glass doors and um, lots of wine as well, as well as the digital, uh, that will finish off the evening quite nicely, but also give the opportunity for a lot of the interesting lessons from the network and the other workshops to sort of be communicated, but also discussed further.